used in a variety of courses in various disciplines, asking the right questions helps students bridge the gap between simply memorizing or blindly accepting information and the greater challenge of critical analysis and synthesis. Specifically, this concise text teaches students to think critically by exploring the components of arguments issues, conclusions, reasons, evidence, assumptions, language and on how to spot fallacies and manipulations and obstacles to critical thinking in both written and visual communication. It teaches them to respond to alternative points of view and develop a solid foundation for making personal choices about what to accept and what to reject. Individual human beings are relatively powerless creatures, no match for lions or bears. It's what they can do, as groups, that has enabled them to take over the planet. These groupings, corporations, religions, states, are now part of a vast network of interconnected information flows. Finding points of resistance, where smaller units can stand up to the waves of information washing around the globe, is becoming harder all the time. First, the scientific community that studies climate change is quietly panic-stricken, because things are moving much faster than they expected. Greenhouse gas emissions are going up faster than predicted both from industrializing countries in Asia and from melting permafrost in Siberia and Canada. The Arctic sea ice is melting so fast that the whole ocean may be ice-free in late summer in five years' time. Most climate scientists now see last year's report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, whose forecasts are used by most governments for planning purposes, as a purely historical document. The biggest early impact of global warming will be on the food supply, both locally and globally. When the global average temperature hits one and a half degrees hotter, and it will, the carbon dioxide already in the atmosphere commits us to that much warming, some countries will no longer be able to feed their people. Others, further from the equator, will still have enough food for themselves, but none to spare. Whether salamander frog or toad, amphibians are some of the most diverse and far-flung animals on the planet. However, they're disappearing, and experts are worried since frogs are considered bellwethers for the environment. Their double life makes them unique. It's through their skin that they breathe and drink water because their skin is so permeable. Thanks to their ability to hijack our most primal desires for connection, distraction, and validation, smartphones have become some of the best-selling devices of all time. Apple have sold more than a billion iPhones since its launch in 2007. By one estimate, we spend an average of almost five hours a day staring at their little screens. The real figure is probably higher, 
a team of British psychologists found that people tend to underestimate the time spent on their phones by about half, whole hours just evaporating in the fog. All of this suggests that our relationship to our phones might not be sufficiently intellectualized, which is why Brian Merchant's book comes as a relief. Like the best historians, Merchant, an American journalist and editor of Vice Media's technology blog, Motherboard, unpacks the history of the iPhone in a way that makes it seem both inevitable in its outline and surprising in its details. As digitalization and smart automation progress, many will see their jobs altered. Advances in automation technologies will mean that people will increasingly work side by side with robots, smart automation, and artificial intelligence. Businesses will look for employees who are good at the tasks that smart automation struggles to do and that add value to the use of smart automation. In the past, technological progress has had a positive impact on our society increasing labor productivity, wages, and prosperity. Right now, a new technological wave of digitalization and smart automation, combinations of artificial intelligence, robotics, and other technologies, is fundamentally transforming the way we work, at an unprecedented pace. For example, data analytics, the Internet of Things, and drones are already used in many industries to make production processes better, faster, and cheaper. We already see shifts in the structure of employment in industries, tasks, educational levels, and skills. Disadvantage in early childhood poses multiple risks to children's development. Factors such as low socioeconomic status, long-term unemployment of parents, and social isolation may have lasting impacts on a child's chance of reaching their full potential. Whilst not eliminating disadvantage, preschool education can help to lessen the effects of these risk factors and can provide children with a better start to school. However, some of these factors may also be barriers to preschool attendance for groups that would benefit most from preschool education. In Australia, the early years of children's education is the responsibility of many government and non-government agencies, and it occurs in a range of settings. In most states and territories, children can start full-time schooling at five years of age, when they enroll in a kindergarten or preparatory year. In 2001, just over half of five-year-olds, 57%, were at school with about a third, 34%, attending preschool. While in some states and territories children can commence preschool before they turn four, participation rates for three-year-olds are much lower than four-year-olds. 24% compared with 56% for four-year-olds in 2001. The preschool participation rate of four-year-olds in 2001, 56%,
was similar to the rate in 1991, 58%. Organized by the International Shakespeare Association, the World Congress is held every five years and 2016 is the first time it will be co-hosted in two locations that were integral to both the personal and working life of William Shakespeare. Delegates will arrive in London on Thursday, following the start of the Congress on Sunday, in Stratford-upon-Avon. With a main theme of creating and recreating Shakespeare, the Congress will look at the continuing global relevance of Shakespeare's work through a varied program of plenaries, panels, seminars, and workshops. A superintelligence is any intellect that vastly outperforms the best human brains in practically every field, including scientific creativity, general wisdom, and social skills. This definition leaves open how the superintelligence is implemented, it could be in a digital computer, an ensemble of networked computers, cultured cortical tissue, or something else. On this definition, Deep Blue is not a superintelligence, since it is only smart within one narrow domain, chess, and even there it is not vastly superior to the best humans. Entities such as corporations or the scientific community are not superintelligences either. Although they can perform a number of intellectual feats of which no individual human is capable, they are not sufficiently integrated to count as intellects, and there are many fields in which they perform much worse than single humans. For example, you cannot have a real-time conversation with the scientific community. In this role, due to their working heritage, border collies are very demanding, playful, and energetic. They thrive best in households that can provide them with plenty of play and exercise, either with humans or other dogs. Due to their demanding personalities and need for mental stimulation and exercise, many border collies develop problematic behaviors in households that are not able to provide for their needs. They are infamous for chewing holes in walls and furniture and destructive scraping and hole digging, due to boredom. Border collies may exhibit a strong desire to herd, a trait they may show with small children, cats, and other dogs. The breed's herding trait has been deliberately encouraged, as it was in the dogs from which the border collie was developed, by selective breeding for many generations. However, being eminently trainable, they can live amicably with other pets if given proper socialization training. The American Border Collie Association recommends that potential owners, before taking on the breed as a household pet, should be sure they can provide regular exercise commensurate with the collie's high energy and prodigious stamina.
An international team of scientists is set to go to Arctic to investigate the Greenland shark longevity mystery. The shark is known to be the longest living vertebrate animal on the planet Earth. One of the members is Dr. Holy Shields, a physiologist and senior lecturer in the Faculty of Life Sciences at the University of Manchester. She will be the only British scientist in the team to study Greenland shark, which is believed to be the vertebrate animals and mammals with the longest living. A working collie may run many miles a day, using its experience, personality, and intelligence to control challenging livestock. These dogs will become distressed and frustrated if left in isolation, ignored or inactive. Like many working breeds, border collies can be motion-sensitive and may chase moving vehicles and bicycles, but this behavior can be modified by training. Some of the more difficult behaviors require patience. The primary goal for this year-long campaign, founded by the English lawyer Peter Benenson and a small group of writers, academics, and lawyers including Quaker peace activist Eric Baker, was to identify individual prisoners of conscience around the world and then campaign for their release. In early 1962, the campaign had received enough public support to become a permanent organization and was renamed Amnesty International. Under British law, Amnesty International was classed as a political organization and therefore excluded from tax-free charity status. To work around this, the Fund for the Persecuted was established in 1962 to receive donations to support prisoners and their families. The name was later changed to the Prisoners of Conscience Appeal Fund and is now a separate and independent charity which provides relief and rehabilitation grants to prisoners of conscience in the UK and around the world.